beautiful room. Everybody's like on the four corners of the world. Uh, <laughs> nice and intimate. If it's not enough that we had to talk after lunch, we also had a professional comedian, which is a thinking guy before us, to make it even easier. Um, and if that's not enough, then the Mac doesn't connect to the system. Um, so uh, together with me, you're going to see a presentation which was actually quite well thought. Um, go through a some sort of PC type of rendering. Now maybe I'll start and say that the whole idea behind this presentation is to get you thinking about actually using video. Uh, when I say using video, it could be either getting professional crew in and, and, and starting to work on something, or even before that, taking your, um, your iPhone or your Galaxy or whatever video camera, small video camera you have, and experimenting with it and putting stuff up and, and, and getting out there with the video. So that's the idea, and I'll, usually you don't start a presentation with the, with the, with the, with the point, but, but I think it's important that you know like, where, where I'm going with this. Um, and I want like a bit of talk about what the situation as I see it from somebody who's been in the nonprofit world on and off for about 12 years um, of what the video like we were talking about video video likes for communication and a bit of the situation we are in our communication with our different constituencies you know our, our donors our, our backers or all the people we, we like to think that are that are behind us when we try to think about you know, who, who's behind us, who do we represent, who's, who, who, who's our people, and we say we have the whole crowd behind us, we're, we're an organization which works for, for, for making the, you know, the, water, the water better and, and, and democracy more, more transparent and feeding the hungry, we have everybody behind us. When the reality is we're usually a bunch of, you know, geeks which are focused on this and this is what we're interested in and we're a small group of people which are trying to get, which, which are trying to get our thing out. Um, when you ask who's the team behind, like who's supporting us, who's pushing us, who's funding us, then yeah, we have a lot of people which are tugging, which are hoping, which are helping. Um, usually the reality is we have two Americans which are overaged and over, you know, overpriced, um, which, which are the people who for some reason find what we're doing, like, you know, probably older and more successful in business geeks, uh, which are behind us. And that's not always a good thing, but that's what we have and, and, and we should, you know, level, see things as, as they are. And when, um, and we talk about who's, who's like, who's watching us, who's looking at what we're doing on the web. And here I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, I didn't give you too much about my background, but, but um, I run a site called Lidl, which is a Jewish, like a Jewish TED type of thing. Um, and I had one of our supporters, or one of the rabbis of one of our supporters, uh, come and show me this site, this Facebook page, okay? This is Jesus Daily. 12 million people are, you know, this is like everybody who loves Jesus. This is, this is where he goes. And he's like, why don't we have 12 million people on our Facebook page? So the, the reality is that we send things out, and it's not only us, but most of us send most of our stuff out, and we don't have that many people looking at what we're doing. We're a bunch of people which have supporters which are, you know, supporters which are interested in what we're doing, and we're not really getting out to this big mass of people that we're trying to get out. And I think the first thing to do is understand that that's our situation, and start working from there. And start figuring out what are the different things that we can do to try changing this, to try getting more people behind us, backing us, not only uh, these big foundations or, or, or donors, to have more people working with us and more people reading what we're doing or engaged in what we're doing or just knowing what we're doing. Okay, that's the, the PR thing is the, is the next session. So I, I'd stay for that because I think it, it, it's those are the things that we're interested in as nonprofits, as a mutot. Um, and in our spiel here, is it's all about communication. Um, and I want to offer a new uh, maybe framework for communication. Um, if the regular brochure, uh, that unfortunately if you look at all the brochures you have on your table, most of them that I went over, are about the organization and we do this and we feed X amount of people and you know, all of this data and, and, and stuff, I think the new, the new thing, the message is you, it's uh, the, the, the world of, of social media, the world of internet is about people connecting to people and now we're doing it on a bigger scale with more people and not only our, 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 our small, you know, 
our, our, our closer circles. We have to get out and have the message of us, of me, um, out there. And what it, when I say the message is you, I mean, it's, 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 it's my ideas, it's your ideas, that's what people are interested in hearing. It's passion, it's our world, and it's what we want to bring out there. So it's not about talking about you know, what our organization is doing all the time, but, 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 but having more of a face. And when I mean a face, I mean literally a face um, to what we're trying to get out there. Um, and if it's not your face, then it's your team. Uh, it's getting the people out there and, 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 and having people see that behind this cause, behind this great endeavor, behind this great, you know, whatever you're doing, there are real people which are interested of do, that you can connect to. That maybe is, is, is the main thing. And if it's you, they have to see have to see you, they have to hear you, they have to feel you, and for that, we offer video. Um, so up until here is like why use video and a bit of like the theoretical framework of why I really think everybody should have a go at it. Um, and I want to get a bit into the practical stuff of how, how I would suggest to you to, to, to try. So the four stages of video are basically production, a pre-production, uh, this is like the Mac uh, thingy with the any. Production, pre-production is everything of, of, of figuring out what you have to do. Production is actually filming. Uh, Post-production is after you film everything you need to do. And uh, distribution and feedback, which is the, the, the new media side, the webish side. Um, I wanna talk about uh, production and distribution and feedback. And focus on those two, on those two parts. Um, and when I say production, the first thing that people come to mind is like, okay, so our organization wants to have uh, videos and make them on a regular basis. We need a camera. Where will we get $5,000 uh, for getting a nice camera like ours, which is only a media organization. We don't do anything but media, so we actually need it. Um, and there's like everybody, okay, so we need a camera. What camera should we get? Start going into B&H and figuring out what, what, what to bring back from New York. Um, or, or there's the, the flip and we'll have a flip and, and that's enough. Both sides, uh, everybody knows what the flip is? It's the iPhone without a phone. Uh, um, both sides are too, you know, too to the extreme. You don't need a $5,000 video. You're much more likely to do with a flip. A flip has a few problems, which we will get into. Um, but, but really it's not about the equipment, it's about using it and using it on a regular basis. The equipment that you do need, and the three most important things about video are audio, okay? The most important thing of getting a video done is making sure that your audio is okay. Because if I stand here and nobody can hear me, you know, and doesn't have anything to do, same thing with video, you can see beautiful pictures, you don't understand what the person is talking about, you don't understand what the person is saying, you lose them like that. So when you make a video, keep in mind, first thing, you have to have the audio right. Uh, so a, a $50 microphone which connects to anything is a very, very, very good investment. The second thing in video is lighting. Um, all of your small cameras, iPhones, flips, whatever, work perfect if there's good lighting. So if you don't have like lighting like this, the best, best lighting for all of them, and they're all prefixed, is a good sunny day and a window. Um, which means don't work under uh, neons, okay? Go outside or open your window or get a room which has a window. I know that a lot of organizations can't afford it, but it's important. Um, audio, lighting. The third thing which is important, also very cheap, is a tripod, okay? Because if nobody's used to seeing, you know, everything shaking, I can't, you can't hold something and keep it still. Nobody holds something and keep it still. Uh, professional video systems, Half of the money is go goes into the video camera, half of it goes into the tripod. Um, so again, you can get really cheap tripods, um, $20, enough. You have to have your thing on a tripod, in a quiet place, well lit, and you're on your way to a video which is watchable and hearable and can communicate your, your, your thing. Okay, that's like all the $5,000 or $10,000 equipment in, in, uh, in much less. Uh, let's see how this comes out. Um, this is a Kodak, um, a small Kodak version of Flip. It's called 8i. It uh, goes for $250. Uh, the beauty about it, it has a place for a microphone, so you can plug in a microphone. 
and buy either a little Sony microphone or one of those. You know, there's, there's plenty of them. As I said, they cost a few, like $50 or something. This, and, and get a tripod or something that makes it, makes it stand. This is what you need to get your video out looking good. Okay, not a crappy video of, 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 of nothing, but you telling, t telling your story, saying whatever you have to say, bringing your message through with your face to your audience. Um, if, you're into, if you're into doing um, vlogging, everybody heard about vlogging? Video, video blogging, okay? It's as simple as writing, sitting down and writing something, but instead of sitting down and writing, you sit down in front of a camera and you say whatever you have to say. Um, on, a, on a regular basis, people are used to seeing it. It's, it's a nice way of communication. You can either get that equipment um, or use a webcam, like the one you have on your Mac. If you don't have a wet Mac, we'll get to that. Uh, um, a few tips for that. When you have, so some people have their, their uh, cameras on their computers, always make sure to be looking up and not looking down. Second thing, make sure your lighting is in front of you. Okay, if I had my light in the back, you couldn't see anything. A computer has much, its, it's vision isn't near as good as our vision, especially if it's a little webcam. Uh, make sure your lighting is in the front and not in the back. Um, and the last thing, this is really fun. <laughs> is um, invest in an external webcam, again, another $20, $25, to get a good Logitech um, HD webcam, plugs, plug and play USB, as simple as they get, um, worth the investment, even just to play around with and, and, and try it, okay? Um, unless you have the 2000 and f 2011 Max, the webcam in the Mac is also not HD and not as good. After you finish making your, your video, um, there's a bit of editing to do, I'll get into that uh, later, but let's say you're just doing a one-shot video, no editing. Where do you upload your video? First place most people think about is onto our Facebook page. And some noise from outside is always interesting. Um, no, don't upload to Facebook. For some reason. Uh, Facebook is hard to upload to. Um, when it goes onto Facebook, it's hard to share it from there. It's not the video platform, it's the social networking platform. It's for, for, for something else. They don't have their video right to, the way I see it. Um, you first upload it to YouTube or other things I will mention shortly. Um, and then you use Owly or another shortening service and you upload it to uh, Facebook. Actually, now that I think about it, Owly is good for Twitter. Facebook upload the whole link. It knows how to take um, YouTube videos and give you a preview. So don't use Audi for, for Facebook, only for Twitter. Um, then where do you upload your video? To YouTube or Vimeo. Um, YouTube, I hope, does not need any introduction. Uploading a YouTube video is as easy as sending an email. Just a bit harder than that. Everybody that has a Gmail account has a YouTube account. Okay, you don't have to open, like a friend came up to me and said, Tommy, listen, I'd like to upload something to your YouTube account because I have a YouTube account. But I'm, but you have a YouTube account too. Really? Yeah, you go into your Gmail, YouTube, that's your YouTube account. It's, it, it's, it's part of Google, same, same. Uh, Vimeo is a bit more of a sleek, has more of a sleek look. It's a bit more of a professional closed community. Um, worth it, especially if you need a bit more of a, of a touchy, you know, of, of a high-end look. Have a look, Vimeo is V-I-M-E-O. Viddler is an option if you don't want your stuff running around um, all over the world which I don't know why you wouldn't want, but if you want very tight control of your, of your content, of your brand, of your everything, have a look at vidler.com. Um, it lets you do a lot of things that other sharing sites don't let you do. Um, and the last but not least is OneLoad, which used to be called QMogul, which is a very ingenious idea where you upload your stuff into OneLoad, and then it opens up, you go back out in the rest of like um, Bleep, Facebook, Metacafe, Twitter, YouTube, it uploads it from there automatically to the rest, of the, the rest of the services. So it's very, very useful to get all your stuff up there to as many places as possible. Um, free, everything that I mentioned here right now have very good free service. So why invest time in uploading into one place when you can invest the same time and get it uploaded into 15 places, um, into 15 places sim simultaneously. Uh, I'm zooming through here a bit. Um, YouTube for nonprofits. Um, YouTube has a nonprofit thing, um, which is very, very, very good. 
Why is it good? It has two very important things. It has a call to action, um, which means that on your, on your video, you can actually put a call to action, donate to us, um, you know, contact our site. Um, the other thing is, I don't know if you know YouTube annotations. The problem with YouTube annotations is you can only link to other YouTube movies. But once you get upgraded to YouTube uh, nonprofit status, then you can link out and link back to your site. So you can have a viral video going everywhere and links back to your site and links back to your donation page and links back to wherever you want. YouTube says this is only for Americans. Lo nachon. Israeli amutot, which are registered amutot and can, can, uh, can approach uh, Google in Israel. And actually, this gets cleared much faster than the rest of their stuff. You know, there's one person there, Acheli. She clears it. You send her an email. Um, or you send, generally, she, she takes it and, and, and she can upgrade your channel quite fast. What? Acheli. Ochle, sorry, this is an English presentation, right. Um, pre-production, uh, Jay talked a bit about pre-production. Um, you have to plan. I really do think that if you want, you should consult with a professional on planning your, your, your stuff. I don't think you need a professional to film on a regular basis, but the beginning you do need a professional to sit down and work and think with you a bit. It's worth the, it's worth the effort. So uh, planning, scripting and visual packaging, which means, you know, all the ktuviot and uh, visual packaging, we call it, um, worth investing into. Uh, Post-production, editing. It's worth uh, contacting somebody that, edit, that does editing. We do editing by chance. Uh, um, to edit because you can't, you know, I can teach you to speak, but I can't teach you to, to, to read and write fluently. It, 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 it's a language. Um, it's, worth, it's worth finding somebody who can help you out with this part after you film. Um, so that was running through the presentation. Any questions? Everything. Outside, if yeah, if anybody wants questions outside, there's the rapid fire booth. I'm here around. More than happy to answer. Thanks.